Welcome to Electro Online. Now we're going to take a look at a summary of things that kind of is confusing for students and it's about a ball hitting a wall at an angle. And there's different situations and I think that's why it makes it difficult sometimes to understand. So we're going to show this with three cases that gives you kind of an overview of how to deal with a ball hitting a wall and trying to find the momentum and the forces involved. So here's our first case. We have a case where a ball hits a wall. There's no friction between the ball and the wall. That's really important. And we're going to assume that no energy is lost. That's of course a physics problem. In the real world, energy is always lost, but let's assume that energy is not lost. What would the collision look like? Well, first of all, it's kind of like light hitting a wall. We could say that the angle of incidence is going to equal the angle of reflection. And so in this case, just as it would be with light, here we can say that the incoming angle and the outgoing angle is going to be equal to one another. That's because no energy is lost. Since there's no friction, mu equals zero, there's no force in the perpendicular direction, in the vertical direction, only force in the horizontal direction. So there can only be a change in the velocity in the horizontal direction or in the x direction. There cannot be any change in the velocity in the y direction which means that the initial velocity in the y direction must equal the final velocity in the y direction. And so therefore there's no impulse in the y direction. And that's what we see here in the y direction. There's no force in the y direction. Therefore the velocity in the y direction before and after is zero. And therefore we can say that the impulse in the y direction must therefore be zero. But in the x direction that's not the case because the ball changes direction. So there's a change in momentum for the ball itself. It's going to be the mass times the difference in the velocities. The velocity in the x direction coming in. Hmm, let's take a look here. Is that right? Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. I was just kind of looking at the signs and I was just confused for a moment. It's the final velocity minus the initial velocity. The final velocity is to the right, so that's positive. The initial velocity is to the left, so that's negative. But we're subtracting that, so that becomes a positive. And notice it's the mass times the difference in the velocity, so you get a positive value here. The impulse is to the right, and it's simply the mass times the difference in the velocities. One is to the left, that's the Initial velocity, we're subtracting that, to the right is the, the final velocity, and so you see we end up at a positive value. But what happens if energy is lost? Again, we're going to assume that mu equals zero, so there's no force in the y direction, there's no change in the momentum in the y direction, so therefore impulse in the y direction must be zero. But if we're going to lose energy, that means the velocity in the opposite direction, so it comes in and it leaves, that must be smaller than that. If it's smaller and the velocity in the y direction doesn't change, the angle will change and the outgoing angle will be bigger than the incoming angle. So the final angle is bigger than the incoming angle simply because the component in the y direction cannot change and the component in the x direction, the magnitude gets becomes smaller. So we can say that the velocity in the x direction will be smaller, the magnitude of that, since it's positive, we could just say its velocity is going to be smaller than the magnitude of the incoming velocity in the x direction. In the y direction, they must be the same because there's no forces, because there's no friction. So again, in the x direction, the momentum is going to be the mass times the change in velocity, final minus initial, and so it's be v final times the cosine of the ang final angle minus the v initial times the cosine of the initial angle. I should put initial down there, like that. All right. But what if it's case three? Case three, there is indeed friction between the wall and the ball. But to assume that energy is not lost. So E is not lost. Well, let's say in the x direction. So we've got to be careful here to be precise. All right, so no energy is lost in the x direction, but is there energy lost in the y direction? Well, the answer is Probably yes, because if there's friction, that means that the velocity in the y direction must change. It must be less after the collision compared to before the collision. So we can see that we can still calculate the, the uh, impulse, which is mass times the change in velocity, and it's still final velocity times the final angle, the cosine of the final angle, minus the initial velocity times the initial angle. Notice that the incoming velocity in the x direction is negative because it goes to the left. We subtract a negative value, you add the two together. In the y direction, notice it'll also be mass times the change in velocity, the difference in velocities. Notice that the final velocity will be v final 
times the sine of the final angle, but it's negative because it's on the downward direction, and the initial velocity is negative as well. Now, which of these two components will be bigger? Well, the final velocity is smaller than the initial velocity. Since I'm subtracting the initial velocity, this is positive and this is negative. The positive value will be bigger than the negative value, which means the impulse will be acting upward, which makes sense because the friction force will be acting upward as the ball is ricocheting off the wall, so the impulse must be in the same direction as the force. And so there you can see that you then calculate the impulse in the y direction like this, and the impulse in the x direction, we assume, uh, is going to simply be mass times the change in velocity, and we assume the velocity doesn't change with the collision because we're not losing energy in the x direction. Just kind of making that up, of course, but again, we want to see the difference between the three situations. Because I always get a lot of questions about this, and so therefore, hopefully, this will clarify it. And that is how it's done.